Hello and welcome again to my workshop. In today's video I'm going to show you how to use Vetrix Aspire to draw up as a CAD system and produce the tool paths to machine a part. So I'm going to show you how to use what is normally used as an art 3D uh, CAM program that you can actually use these type of programs to machine parts. Similar to Fusion 360 but uh, you have to use this program in a slightly different way. Okay so here's Vetrix Aspire. Oh. The screen that presents itself when you open it. So the first thing to do is come up into this top corner up here and incidentally a lot of people have asked me why I don't use a screen capture. Well, a couple of reasons really. First reason, I don't like it. <laughs> Second reason is I talk a lot with my hands and I, I direct you know, things on the screen with my hands. So I'm more comfortable doing it like this. So here's the reason. Okay, so up here we're going to uh, create a new file. So this is the opening screen with a, a dialog box on this side. Um, a dialog box is It's exactly what it says, and there's several actually there's actually several different meanings for it. Dialog meaning the computer communicates with you, and that's what it's doing, asking you questions. It's also called a wizard, and it's also called a new age name for it is a conversational. So that's what this is. <laughs> Right, now this is our stock material. It's a piece of 2 inch by 2 inch or 50 mil by 50 mil. In actual fact that's not absolutely true. Uh, there's 25.4 millimeters uh, to an inch and this is actually 50 mil by 50 mil so it is 0.8 of a millimeter smaller than two inches. Okay, now I get a lot of questions uh, from people um, saying to me why I, I don't work in inches. Well, I used to um, many, many years ago until I went to college. And when I went to college, metric was just being brought in. This is the, the end of the, the 60s. And um, so the college that I went to decided that they were going to teach in metric only. So, you know, you get used to using metric. Um, I do, I can use uh, inches, obviously, and those, but I just find it more convenient to use millimeters as all the stock in Australia is basically in all in millimeters. So here's another answer to another question. So here we go. So this is a 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter solid uh, <coughs> billet of aluminium. And this is going to make the rear uh, bearing block for our little Harbour Freight or SIG. Um, 7 by 14, now that's inches, lathe conversion to CNC. So that's what this is going to be, and we're going to use, okay, saying Vetric Aspire to do that. Um, and just to prove to you that uh, these type programs that are normally used for art, 3D art on CNC routers and what have you, uh, can actually be used on mainstream milling machines, um, or any CNC machine actually, to um, work as, as, as a normal CAD CAM program. 
So that's what we're going to do. Uh, this is actually about 75 millimeter long. So our first job is we're going to uh, deck the one end off and turn it around in the in the vise and then machine down till I've got 70 millimeters. Okay, and when I said at the very beginning that you use the program in a slightly different way, um, I'm just going to show you now the the, the, the different. I'm just going to show you now what I meant. What I meant was that in Fusion 360 you draw the whole thing up and in 3D space and you can bore this way and that way and machine off this face and in all directions. You can't do that with these. You can end up with a three-dimensional object, yes, but you're are working in a two-dimensional plane. In other words, you draw up and do the tool pass for this end and obviously that end, okay, and then you do a separate drawing for this face and do whatever machining in this two-dimensional plane, then you turn the material again Okay, and you do a separate CAD CAM drawing and tool pass for the uh, a different plane. So that's how you make up your 3D object. So we're going to do the first one now, which is um, a facing. Very simple. Okay, so it's 50 millimeter in the X. So it's going to be in the machine like this. So we have X and Y. And obviously Z is the up and down part. Um, 50 by 50. And this number, we're going to put down there 70. Because that's what we want to end up with. So that's 70 in the, in the Z. So we're looking down on top of the material now at the moment. Um, material surface, that's correct. Um, now, as we're using a milling machine, as a converted mill, by the way, and I've, I've got about, um, I think it's um, 19 videos, actually, concerning the modification and, and making of a CNC mini mill. It was a SIG X2, and we're going to be using it for this job. Uh, so, with a milling machine, normally back left corner is your zero position. Uh, I'm going to leave this as uh, standard and, and brass, it's fine, material. And uh, we're going to press OK. So we're going to come out of that. I'm going to get the drawing tool of a square. And we're going to draw a square over the whole lot. And you'll notice I've got uh, snap turned on as well. So that is showing me that it's 25, 25, 50 mil, 50 mil. And it's exactly in the, in the right position. So it's actually snapped into place for us. We're going to apply that and close. So in actual fact, we have now, for this section, we have finished with this. So now we can go straight to the toolpath section. Did you notice what I did there? There was a, let's do that back again. See, up in this top corner, a little square with a blue arrow in, and you can switch back and forth to like the drawing and modeling uh, side here. Up here, little little square with a blue arrow, press that, it takes you straight into toolpaths. So the toolpath that we want is a well we can use we can use a pocket, it's okay. Because there's not a designated facing. 
and this is another dialog box. Okay, so stat depth is zero, that's correct, it's the top of the material. Cut depth, one millimeter, that's exactly what we want to do. I want to take a millimeter off at the time. Okay, so now we're going to select a tool and we're going to select a 12 millimeter and this is a 12 millimeter full flute end mill, nice brand new one. Camera can see it a little bit better there. Full flute, nice brand new end mill. So we're going to OK that. Oh, okay. There we go. 12 mil. And we're going to OK that. And then we're going to go in and edit this to suit our little mill. Uh, that's correct. One millimeter. Step over. Now I I like to be pretty conservative. So oh, that's probably okay actually. 4.8 is probably okay. I'll take it down to four mil. Now you know what? Five mil is okay. Spindle speed now. The spindle isn't actually operated via Mac 3 um, and for, I know that the little mill will be running at 5000 RPM. So we'll put the correct amount in. Feed rate, 40 millimeters per second. Now if he's going through wood, it would be fine. We're going through aluminium, so we're going to say 10. Plunge rate, 5. And this is going to be tool number one, and we're going to OK that. So, you know, this is setting the speed and feeds. Now, you're going to remember that you're cutting, with alum you're cutting aluminium, what the RPM can be, cutting aluminium. I'm using flood coolant, so it's going to be cooled. So running at 5,000 RPM is OK. Um, Although I am setting this at 10 millimeters a second of travel and 5 millimeter of plunge, it's not actually going to be running that because I'm going to be setting it in Mark 3 to, for Mark 3 to administer about 30% of those feed rates. And then if I see things going OK, then I speed it up. So we're going to OK that. We're going to use an offset strategy. Offset strategy means it's going to start on the outside and it's going to rotate and wind its way in. And we're going to do a climb move-in, not conventional. You get a better finish with a climb, although this is a facing. It's still a better, better at a climb mill. Operation ramp moves. Yeah, I like to use ramp moves. Um, 25 millimeters is a little bit too distance, a little bit too much. We're going to say five millimeter. Five millimeter. I want to start the ramp at five millimeter uh, off the material. No, that doesn't matter to us. Safe Z is 5 millimeter. Home position 0, 0, 20 millimeter. Well, I can actually change. No, I don't want to change that. That's okay. Okay, so it's going to go to a safe position of 20 millimeters above the material. That's okay. I want to say Safe Z. That means that it's that's where the, the program is going to start. Then it's going to come down to five millimeters, and then it's going to start operating from there. There we go. And there it is. Come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. 
Right. Let's um looks a bit odd in beach, but uh, there we go. Let's um I was gonna start in the middle. That's okay. Okay, so there's a mistake. It's going to machine, but it's going to leave the corners. So what I have to do is go back to the 2D and come out, go back to the drawing, select out here. Am I going to select? 6565. Okay, so I've deleted that one because it's just shown me that it's going to miss the corners, which is going to be no good to us at all. So I'm going to select this outer one, select this, and go through the same procedure. Edit, that should have stayed, remained the same. We're going to go conventional mode this time. I want it to start on the outside. It seems to want to start on the inside. Let's do climb. So we're going to go raster this time. Because I, I want it to start on the outside of the material, not the inside. That's better. And let's just see if it does start on the outside. I think it, yes, it does. It starts here. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so we've covered the whole area, which is pretty good. Okay, so we want to save that toolpath now. And we want to save it in a language, a G code language, that Mark 3 understands, which is down here, which is G code here we go, G code millimeters tap. That's a standard G code that any machine will understand. Save. So that's two operations, that's the both ends taken care of. So now we're going to go for a new. Uh, no, we don't want to save it. Okay. Next operation. So this is my CAD drawing. <laughs> Uh, that I sort of do on the fly measuring up. So the next operation, uh, we need to turn the material around. So it's going to be 70 in the X and 50 in the Y and thickness is going to be 50. That's going to be our piece. Everything else here is, is correct. Material surface zero, that is. Back corner there. And this is okay. So there's a couple of operations we need to do here. Okay, so the first operation, I have to take a big trench. I have to machine this front part all the way down, leave five millimeters of material, or six millimeters actually. So we're going to use the same tool. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the drawing and we're going to go outside of the material. Yes. Outside of the material. something like that, because I want a machine off, and I don't want any corners left. And now we're going to set this up for 
yeah, 90 millimeters long, which is fine. And we want to want to set this at for. Uh, what have I got on my drawing? 18 millimeters. And this needs to be central. Okay, I've just reset the start of this cut. I was just here. And that needs to be... So it was set at the, the middle, that's what the problem was. So I've set it at this far corner, it's the origin point. So this needs to be 32 millimeters. Um, make this a nice round finger, figure of 10. Point zero. I'm going to apply that and close and then come over to this side same operation we're going to do a pocket and it's going to be selected in it's going to be 12 millimeter again it just checks yeah, everything's the same one millimeter depth start this end we may have to change this to a conventional milling because I want it to start over this side and work its way that way in actual fact I could make the orientation here I think that's what I'll do so this is the second pocket we'll call it it's all with the same tool, all with 12mm okay so here we are simulating the tool pass it's a long way, it's got to go down 44 millimeters. It's showing there's a little lip here, a very, very thin lip. I don't think that's going to be left at all. That's actually roughly what I want, but uh, I don't believe that this is going to be left there. I think that's that's going to uh, that's going to go. So that's what we want—a big step taken out of it, like that, with six millimeter left here. So that's okay. So we'll save that tool path now. So our next job is to create this pocket for a bearing. So that means we're going to turn, just say for example that big slot has just been taken out of there, we're going to now turn it that way and come in from here and make the pocket. 50 by 70, same again. We want a couple of guidelines here, so we're going to fetch a guideline in and this needs to be 21 millimeters this edge 21 I need another guideline in the middle this is 70 so this is going to be 35 which I think is there let's have a look 35 and that's so that's where our pocket center is going to be, right there. And we're going to OK that. We're going to get our circle. And hopefully it's going to snap to there. And that needs to be, let's see the Y, that needs to be 21. Point zero, and that's exactly 35. Uh, I like diameter mode. This needs to be 26. 26, and apply. So our ledge is going to be here. So 
So that close that. That's fine. So we're going to create a pocket and we're going to use may as well use the same tool start of material surface we're going to then go eight millimeters eight point zero and we're going to use the same tool same parameters okay that um, this time we're going to use an offset apply mill in offset we're going to start in the middle ramp yep yeah, that's okay and we're uh, pocket three Uh, that's fine, that's exactly what we want. And we're going to save that. So we'll close that. And save that as pocket 3 to our saving device. Save. And basically, that's done. So now we'll go on to the machining. And I'll show you what all those. Uh, three different, uh, or actually four different operations. Um, with that, we'll end up with a, a nice pad. So today, what I'm going to do, because it's, it's a, going to be a really stormy day, and uh, so the the sound quality is not going to be really very good. So what I'm going to actually do is just video some highlights and put some uh, high-speed footage in so you can see some of these parts come out and uh, I hope you enjoy it.